Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the Amazon drone marketing scheme. Then, the war for energy. And Alex Jones calls to boycott the NFL. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I think I'm going to get on an airplane and go to where they're holding a stupid gladiatorial event. I mean, nothing against it. It's just guys bending over and guys put their hands down and then grab the ball and all pat each other and everything. So, so I think I shouldn't, shouldn't protest it because that's being anti-gay. Well, everybody is talking about the grid these days. Energy officials are especially worried about the stability of this system as it's needed to carry electricity from place to place and also to spy on all of us Americans. We're constantly being reminded about how vulnerable the grid is to a freak storm or a terrorist attack or some hacker that's sophisticatedly hacked into the system from his mom's basement. Well, now they are telling us that the new struggle facing the grid is power itself, and specifically green energy. Experts say that as states race to bring more wind, solar, and geothermal power online, it's creating more anxiety for a grid that's designed for the previous century. Green energy is the least predictable kind. Nobody can say for certain when the wind will blow or the sun will shine. Solar panels might be cranking out huge amounts of energy one minute and then a tiny amount the next if a cloud arrives. So then the other big problem, of course, is energy storage. Power grid operators in some states have had to dump energy that's produced by wind turbines because they don't really have anywhere to store it. And they say it's getting to the point where we'll have to pay people not to produce power. Not to mention the fact that it takes tons of materials created via fossil fuels to actually build the wind turbines, as well as where are they going to put them all? And they don't even know if they, once they are approved, if regulators will then allow the lines that are necessary to carry electricity from place to place. They don't even, it's just, it's a mess. And tomorrow night, David Knight is gonna get into greater detail about just how useless those renewables are to the grid in his interview with David Schneer. But for now, it really seems like they are trying to scrap renewables altogether. And at the very release, their uh, PR campaign is struggling. <laughs> We're already hearing from countries like Canada, who in their big rush toward renewable energies are reporting that their energy rates are actually increasing by 60%. And now that governments around the world have agreed to stop global warming by reducing coal power and uh, energy sources like oil and natural gas by 80%, now what are we going to do? Their reduction plan assumes that we'll be able to compensate for the ever-increasing energy demand by making our homes and machines more and more efficient. Now this vastly expanded grid, it's gonna prove to be too expensive, it could generate local opposition, and as I mentioned, there's no way to store the energy for when it is actually needed. Well, Sally Benson, who heads the Global Climate and Energy Project at Stanford University, is teaching her students how to think about reducing emissions with all energy. You can't lose jobs at all those power plants after all. Well, remarkably, the conclusion that students came up with mirrors what a lot of experts have found when they look at this problem. They recommend capturing carbon dioxide from plants that burn fossil fuel and burying it underground. They also say that reducing the emissions would mean producing a substantial amount of nuclear power. Hmm, well, isn't that interesting? Because ever since Obama took office, he's really been pushing for nuclear power. And he reiterated that this year in his climate action plan. He said, thanks to the ingenuity of our businesses, we're starting to produce much more of our own energy. We're building the first nuclear power plants in more than three decades in Georgia and South Carolina. Obama also expressed support for the country's booming natural gas development while announcing that he would direct the Environmental Protection Agency to create pollution standards that would restrict power plant carbon emissions. And indeed, they are. The EPA's regulatory agenda for the fall of 2013 lists hundreds of pending energy and environmental regulations that are going to limit emissions from power plants, as well as give the EPA authority over water that's on private land. <laughs> the EPA will set emission limits 
that are going to effectively ban the construction of new coal-fired power plants unless they use carbon capture and sequestration technology like those college kids recommended. And then next year, the agency will move to limit emissions from existing power plants, which could put more older coal plants out of commission. But what about those jobs? Those all important jobs. Well, already EPA regulations have contributed to the closure of more than 300 coal units in 33 states. So he doesn't really care about coal plants. He just wants to keep those nuclear plant jobs flowing. Now, the EPA is also working on a rule that would expand the definition of waters of the U.S. under the Clean Water Act to include water on private property. Now, Texas Republican Lamar Smith said the EPA's draft water rule is a massive power grab of private property across the U.S., and it could be the largest expansion of EPA regulatory authority ever. The EPA says the rule is needed to clear up uncertainty left in the wake of a U.S. Supreme Court decisions on the agency's regulatory authority over bodies of water. <laughs> So the Supreme Court ruled one way, and so the EPA and Obama are just, of course, true to form, going to interpret that ruling and that law the way they see fit, which is, you didn't actually mean that we don't have authority over water on private property, right? Because we do. And so now they're Obama and the EPA are going to be shutting down all the coal power plants. They're ramping up nuclear technology, get doing away with renewable energies forcing you to put smart meters on your home, and now they're going to be taking authority over water on your property. Sounds very socialist to me, but we all know that socialists can't keep the lights on. Just look at what's happening in Venezuela. Now, even though Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the world and two hydroelectric facilities that generate two thirds of its power, its socialist government appears incapable of meeting the rudimentary needs of the people. Some of those earlier blackouts were part of a rationing scheme by the government, while others were due to utility failures. The outages haven't affected the country's oil production facilities, of course, because those oil refineries are powered by separate generators. How convenient. Now, President Maduro suspects sabotage. After all, the outage did occur while he was delivering a live national address on television, uh, which is just kind of wildly convenient to help support that sabotage theory, since the president had just given most of the country a free television for every home. And Maduro has used earlier outages as political fodder to attack his enemies. So is that the kind of political game playing that we can expect to see here with the grid? After all, we are continually being told how vulnerable our grid is to cyber attacks. So if you don't agree with me, oops, I'm sorry, your power went out. <laughs> I can just see Obama playing that game, sort of like we saw when the uh, government shut down and he just shut down all the national parks to make us feel the pain. I don't think he would have any problem flipping the switch on the nation's power grid. Or, and I, I bet he cannot wait to get his fingers on the internet kill switch. But that is probably just a conspiracy theory. It doesn't exist. Just like chemtrails. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean solar radiation management, geoengineering. Yes. Well, according to the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, chemtrails don't exist. And, and even though that they don't exist and they're not spraying the sky, they also say that in order to stop global warming, we absolutely mustn't stop doing it. <laughs> they say if SRM were terminated for any reason, there is high confidence that global surface temperatures will rise very rapidly. Solar radiation management has three essential characteristics. It's cheap, fast, and imperfect. The IRGC explains that by injecting 13,000 tons of sulfate aerosol into the stratosphere on a daily basis, they would offset the radiative effects of a doubling of atmospheric CO2. And this compares to having to remove 225 million tons per day of CO2 from the atmosphere for 25 years. So heck, that sounds like we've solved the problem. No need to uh, bury CO2. We can just block out the sun with this cheap and uh, imperfect plan that they've got in place. 
But in addition to warning the policymakers in its summary that chemtrails must continue, the IPCC also denies that such programs exist. Buried deep within Chapter 7, the IPCC simply states that SRM methods are unimplemented and untested. And that's odd because I thought if we stopped, the planet would heat up. <laughs> but <laughs> the IPCC goes on to admit that a number of field experiments have already taken place. One of the programs listed, the Intercontinental Chemical Transport Experiment, covered the Northern Hemisphere. They were measuring aerosols that originated in Asia, crossing the Pacific into the North America, and then continuing across the Atlantic Ocean and into Europe. Another experiment ran for full four years, and it included Africa. And look, it even has a nice little logo there showing you <laughs> what it was all about, spring 2006, but it doesn't actually exist. They never actually did that. It's a conspiracy theory, and if you think that they were actually spraying the sky to stop global warming, then you are a crazy conspiracy theorist. And of course, since they're not spraying the sky with uh, solar radiation management, that's why they need nuclear energy, which is also a conspiracy theory to think that nuclear energy isn't the cleanest and the best out there. At least that's what they're telling us. And if you don't think so, well, here's proof. Smartplanet.com says so. They say that nuclear is on par with geothermal and it's virtually the same as wind. Now, they don't really specify if they're talking about a nice breeze on a Sunday or if they're speaking about a hurricane, but nevertheless, they think it's on par. And they go on to crit critique Germany, saying that Germany thinks it's okay to emit tens of megatons more of CO2 because they like coal better than nuclear. Well, remind us, how many Germans have died from nuclear power radiation? And what about Americans, the English, the French? Oh yes, all zero. And they uh, continue on saying that renewable energies, uh, we're not even talking about the vast tracts of land and sea that's taken for wind, nor are we talking about species threats, maintenance emissions, worker dangers, and even maritime dangers for offshore windmills. But even with all of that fancy propaganda and the failure of the mainstream media to report about Fukushima, the devastating effects of that nuclear meltdown cannot be ignored. Even the president of the company that runs Fukushima is speaking out. TEPCO's president said that the triple meltdown following the earthquake and tsunami in Japan was a warning to the world and the nuclear industry must be prepared for the worst. He said that despite what the nuclear industry and the public wanted to believe, nuclear power was not 100% safe. We have to explain, no matter how small a possibility, what if this barrier is broken? We have to prepare a plan if something happens. It's easy to say that, you know, almost nothing's perfect, so we don't have to worry about it, but we have to keep thinking, what if? And that's exactly true. What if? What if the hundreds of tons of nuclear waste that are dumping into the Pacific Ocean every day are killing five million birds off the coast of Australia or causing radiation and radioactive isotropes to be found in fish off the coast of California and Canada? And what if all those melting starfish are suffering from radiation? It's, it's not far-fetched to understand that radiation affects the nervous system, and starfish have a very primitive nervous system. But just like they told us that mercury in the vaccines is safe, now they're telling us that nuclear energy is also safe. Obama wants a new generation of nuclear power plants, but that doesn't mean clean nuclear power plants. No, it means just much of the same, because clean nuclear energy doesn't produce the weapons grade byproduct that is necessary for the military industrial complex to build their war machines. And there you have it. Well, stick around because coming up after the break, Alex Jones has two very important messages for you. This is a conspiracy by the technocrats, by the ruling elite, by the eugenicists that want to dumb us down. This is the iodine conspiracy. Our government wasn't always a eugenicist-based predatory group. Back in the 1920s, the federal government pressured 
salt manufacturers and bread producers to add iodine because they knew that iodine deficiencies were causing massive decreases in IQ, birth defects, and it was a health crisis all across the United States and in Europe as well. In the decade after iodine was added to staple foods, there was a 15-point increase in IQs in the areas that had previously been deficient. So what did the federal government do a couple decades later? They took the good halogen iodine out and added another bad one, bromine. And they put the worst of the group, fluoride and fluorine derivatives, in our water supply and began using it as a pesticide on the crops. Let's be clear about this. Adding bromine to the food supply is banned in the EU, banned in Canada, and banned in many other nations because it is a toxic poison listed in those countries. I've done deep research on the globalist program to dumb down the population to make us more manageable. It is eugenics. And I personally take the highest quality form of unbound iodine, nascent iodine, in a kosher certified, non-GMO certified glycerin base. I've interviewed the experts, people like Dr. Brownstein and pharmacist Ben Fuchs, and of course, Dr. Edward Groot. And across the board, the consensus is iodine is the missing piece of the puzzle. And not just iodine, but high quality, unbound, pure iodine. Bottom line, this is something on record our bodies need. I've gone out and found the best source for myself and my family. I hope you'll visit InfoWarsLife.com and get our InfoWars Life Survival Shield. It really does incredible things. And we've got nothing but positive reviews from our listeners. And this also helps support our news operation and the InfoWar while we get the iodine we need and block the fluoride and the other members of the halogen that are so bad for our bodies check out the information. Do the research for yourself. Talk to your physician and then decide whether you want to drink fluoridated water that Harvard major studies admits is giving people brain cancer and bone cancer and lowering their IQ or whether you want to find a high quality source of iodine. Consult your physician, do your research and make a decision. But whatever you do, don't just ignore this message because all of my research shows this is absolutely key to getting people out of the brain fog that they've been artificially put into by the social engineers. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Ah, football, that great American pastime. Now, we all know that watching a little football every now and then, it's definitely dumbing you down. But did you ever think something that's as American as apple pie could actually become propaganda straight out of the Nazi playbook? I have a question for you. Is there anything that American football fans will not put up with from the NFL? Throughout history, corrupt governments and tyrannical regimes have used sporting events as propaganda showcases. Ancient Rome used sporting events as a place to promote their agenda. Hitler, famously in the 1936 Olympics, hosted by Germany, used the event to push Nazism and other forms of oppression. And now the National Football League resembles something out of the Soviet era in Russia, promoting anti-family, anti-gun. And the big question is, will Americans now put up with the National Football League pushing the nightmare that is Obamacare officially in their broadcast. And President Obama in the intro now to Monday Night Football with Hank Williams Jr. removed. And of course, the biggest outrage, officially demonizing last year and this year the right of citizens to keep and bear arms for self-defense. It's not just Bob Costas. It's the NFL itself is acting like Joseph Stalin has seized control of it. And football fans are putting up with it. And so we are now seeing more and more of this anti-liberty, anti-American garbage. So Americans have to decide, are you going to roll over and put up with this because you love watching your football so much? 
or are you going to boycott the NFL because of their anti-American agenda? And because the NFL thinks that the American spirit is broken, because they think football fans will put up with anything, they've now doubled down and they've banned any type of pro-Second Amendment advertising from the NFL and from the Super Bowl. Part of every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. A very well-respected firearms manufacturer, Daniel Defense, produced an ad that simply shows a father driving home talking about how he wants to protect his family and how it's a basic human right. He comes in the house, walks by, photos of his family, himself in his Marine Corps uniform, goes in to be with his wife and his baby daughter. And no one has the right to tell me how to defend them. And then they simply say, brought to you by Daniel Defense, and never even advertise the firearms. The reason the NFL banned the wholesome ad is because it is so wholesome and it shows how natural and good self-defense is with firearms in the hands of the American people to protect our homes. And that's why it's been banned. That's why it's been restricted. This is a pattern of censorship where they got rid of Hank Williams Jr. because he didn't worship the president and put the president in the intro in his place. You mean when, when John over. Boehner played golf with President Obama? Oh, yeah. It'd be like Hitler playing golf with Netanyahu, okay? Okay. Not hardly. We have a war on the press now in this country. Even Democrats admit it's unprecedented. We as Americans have to come together in defense of the entire Bill of Rights, not just the Second Amendment, but the First Amendment as well, and have to send a clear message to the NFL that we're not going to put up with TSA groping us to get into the game, that we're not going to sit there and be bombarded by Obama administration messages at these gladiatorial events. And we're not going to see good, wholesome, pro-family advertising banned while they allow all this raunchy pop music garbage to be spewed at our families. The NFL is completely out of control. It is being used as a propaganda system against the American people. And if we don't have a serious boycott against the NFL and against their major sponsors, we will basically put up with anything and the sky is the limit. There is an attack on free speech across the board and we have to respond to it. Yahoo, Google, newspapers, TV stations, you name it, have banned gun shops advertising, have banned shooting ranges from advertising. There is a reign of terror where major banks are telling gun manufacturers and gun shops, we won't take your money, you can't have a bank account with us. This is a hardcore form of economic warfare. And now the NFL has been turned into the tip of the spear to destroy our Bill of Rights and Constitution. If the American people will not wake up and if the sleeping giant will not send a clear message to the NFL that we are not going to be propagandized by it, then America's over, America's done. If they can take the so-called American pastime and turn it into an authoritarian bullhorn, we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, Football is not the American pastime. 1776 and July 4th is about human liberty and the individual being empowered. It's not about giant, decadent, gladiatorial events that are about fame and fortune and shallow garbage. If Americans knew as much about our Bill of Rights and Constitution and about the free market and about what made this country great, if Americans knew as much about that as they did about how much some lineman can bench press, we would still be a free country. So will you trade liberty and the blessings of liberty for the NFL and for Obama? The choice is up to you. Contact the NFL. Contact their sponsors. Make your own YouTube videos. And tell the NFL, if you agree with me, that you are not going to put up with their propaganda. 
And if you think it's good that the NFL has been turned into a Soviet-style propaganda bureau, then by all means, put out your own videos in support of it. If you really want to live in North Korea, then tell us why tyranny is such a great thing. Let your voice be heard. Tell the NFL in phone calls and emails and on Facebook and Twitter that you're not going to stand by and be part of this, that you're not going to watch any of these games, you're not going to watch Fox that's going to air the Super Bowl, and that you're going to tell others to boycott it and spend time with their family or time at local churches and soup kitchens being with real Americans and not part of this modern Roman decadent spectacle that has become the National Football League. Give me liberty or give me death. As for me and my family, we are going to 100% boycott the NFL for the next couple years until they change their tune and apologize and promise to stop brainwashing the American people. We'll be right back with Alex Jones debunking another piece of marketing propaganda. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. The mainstream media is no stranger to propaganda. It's no longer their job to report the news and tell you the truth about what's going on in this world. No, their job is to push the agenda of their corporate masters and make you buy whatever it is they're selling. And Amazon.com has gotten extremely sophisticated with their propaganda this holiday season. The social engineers at CBS and Amazon probably hatched this a year ago. You can just hear them in one of their corporate meetings with Bezos. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Imagine drones, shopping, holidays. Everybody will pick up on it. We'll get hundreds of millions of dollars of advertising free. And all we got to do is slip a couple million into the advertising budget over at CBS and they'll bite on it. Man, I tell you, this is easier than taking candy from a baby. It's hard to believe that no one in the state-run media or even the alternative media that I've seen have figured out what Amazon is up to with this announcement that they're going to deliver packages anywhere in the world within 30 minutes via drone. That is completely unfeasible on so many fronts. 
It is designed to make everyone, right at the kickoff of the holiday shopping season, right as Christmas approaches, to talk about Amazon.com. It's that simple. It's a total stunt. And I guarantee you, I know this from working in the media for 18 years, if you go investigate 60 Minutes, who I know in the past has taken product placement money that they have been paid, or CBS has been paid, to promote Amazon and to put out this hoax story. This is an absolute War of the Worlds level fraud to get everybody talking about drones delivering packages to people's homes so that everyone talks about Amazon. That's what's happening. When you see somebody drinking a Coke in a movie or on the set of the news, they're being paid to do it. When you see a Marine Corps ad in a movie in, on a billboard, that was paid for. When you watch shows like The Apprentice and they talk about Virgin Atlantic Airlines over and over again, they were paying tens of millions of dollars per season for that. It's paid for. Guaranteed. And the average person I talk to doesn't even know there's product placement or what I call propaganda placement throughout the media. TV, films, radio, it's everywhere. Infowars.com does not take product placement. When we have sponsors and products, we're upfront about it. And most advertising today is covert public relations, and it's what's destroyed the journalistic integrity of the U.S. and European and Western media. It's all basically corporate or state-run media now, and this is a giant hoax by the predatory folks over at Amazon, and it's disgusting. Think about it. I have InfoWarsStore.com, and if I had millions of dollars to advertise in other divisions of CBS, which they are doing, then they would come over and say, hey, let us do a story for Amazon about drones. They're hot. In fact, my gut tells me that it was probably 60 Minutes and CBS that approached Amazon. So the so-called media out there, if you don't want to be completely passe and not in the game, you need to go out now and ask 60 Minutes and ask the CEO of Amazon if indeed they paid for this stunt. But regardless, it is a stunt staged right at the beginning of the Christmas holiday shopping frenzy kicking off. That's what happened, and this is a PR hoax. And again, I'm completely freaked out that no one even gets it. They're going, it's unfeasible. They'll crash. They'll videotape us. It's a police state. It does serve the purpose of acclimating us to the drone system that's being rolled out, but it'll never be feasible with what Amazon's doing. It's not meant to be feasible. It's meant to make you debate it and you talk about it, and then at a subliminal level, but also at an overt level, then you go and leave the water cooler at lunch at work and buy a bunch of stuff on Amazon. So there you have it, another publicity stunt staged by the corporate masters at Amazon with CBS. You can bet your bottom dollar on it. And if anybody out there in the media wants to actually be pertinent and be journalist again, you can investigate what I just pointed out, and I guarantee you, you're going to find out it's true. Because I can see a PR stunt from a mile away, and this is one of the most blatant I've ever seen. It's a con job, it's a scam, and it worked beautifully on the United States of Suckers, the formerly land of the free, home of the brave. How do we become free again? We stop being gullible morons. We start realizing there's an agenda to manipulate us, and it's everywhere. <gasps> oh, I forgot. If you say there's an agenda by powerful groups, it's a conspiracy theory. You're right. No one's trying to manipulate you or influence you. Well, stick around after the news for a very special report from Jakari Jackson regarding new upcoming gun regulations. And as always, join us here again weekday nights at 7 p.m. Central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. The deadline for the proposed National Firearms Act is fast approaching. 
This will give the ATF more say-so over the transfer of guns in this country. Some of the bullet points include the government's definition of who a responsible person is. It would also require all persons in trust to submit photographs and fingerprints and also require all applications to be forwarded to law enforcement. I find it very troubling that the ATF, an agency involved in Operation Fast and Furious, which supplied guns to Mexican drug cartels, has the authority to tell the U.S. population who a responsible citizen is. Also, the proposed regulations for gun trust and also gun corporations, which could affect things like gun suppressors. Do you think all this new regulation is necessary? Oh, not at all. I mean, basically, what you're talking about, with, with suppressors in general, it probably is the most highly regulated item in the firearms market already. And when you consider that it's really nothing more than a safety device, it, it's the regulation that's already there could be considered to be kind of ridiculous. But there is still time to get involved. Go to regulations.gov. You can see the docket number right there on your screen. Voice your opinion on that page. But don't stop there. Email the ATF. Call the ATF. Show up at their offices and voice your concern for this. Because this is one of those things that even if we do beat it, and I do believe that we can, they're going to try again and again. So stay sober, stay vigilant, and stay on the fight for freedom. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs>